Hello, how's it going? We're back out and working on this piece of shit. I broke the car and I wanna show you guys what exactly happened. Get the flashlight. Again, this was an intake from eBay. You see the light? Yeah. I don't know exactly how this happened. I thought these things break after 30 pounds of boost. After 30 pounds of boost. Like, plus. So, I always drive my thing at like level 3, which is around 20 pounds. And this happened, I think, uh, a week and a half ago. I think I went on a cruise and uh, with my wife's cousin and a buddy. And he has a G80. And uh, they were kind of playing around in Mexico. And uh, I thought I'd join and I turned it up all the way, which is 30 pounds and uh, sent it. So I think that's what happened. I think it just cracked because one, it was cold uh, outside and uh, intake temps were under, you know, 60 or 70. And yeah, I think it just gave out. And I think I was running this for about two years and people have a t people mentioned these have a tendency to crack. Um, because they're eBay uh, manifolds. And uh, yeah, so that's what happened. I'm not happy. And um, it was a pain in the ass to, uh, just to get a bunch of these Allen bolts out. I got about one, two, three, four, five of them out. Actually six of them. I don't know where the sixth uh, screw that fell is somewhere around here. But uh, I got, Two more to go. One's already loose on the top, and then this is the bottom one right here. I had to take the intake uh, throttle body out, which I didn't want to take out because these... I think I stripped one of those holes. I think it's that little top one. So when I go ahead and install it, I got to make sure that it's, you know, I hand tighten it and then screw it all the way. And before I put the intake back on, I'll talk to you guys about exactly what I did. As you can see, maybe I'll just talk to you guys now. As you can see, I did like a drilling on this part, like halfway through it, uh, about three eighths, which you need to do to make it fit the RMR throttle body on the eBay intake. And then along with that, you do need to get this sc screws grinded down a little bit. I believe these are a little more fatter than what it is right now. I had a machinist do this to make it work, but yeah. Uh, some machine work required, some customization required on your end as well. You just got to halfway into it. You got to go three eighths uh, and drill it in and then make the hole bigger to be mounted on this. But now I got to figure out what I need to do with this intake. I'm going to go ahead and get it welded. I was planning on doing it myself, but now I don't trust it because obviously there's a huge crack line. Uh, where's the light? Yeah, there's the light. So, yeah, I don't trust myself doing it, and just gonna go ahead and get it done. All right, guys. So, the first part of this, I basically talked to you guys about the intake being cracked, and I showed you guys how it looked cracked. And you know, I put the light in, showed you guys how big the crack was and everything. So, now fast forward a couple of days, almost a week later. I got the intake manifold back. Uh, I got it pretty uh, welded all around, as you can see, all around. And uh, I got everything back installed. It took me a while to get this installed. I got some new bolts as well. Uh, I ended up using some 8.8. .8. Let me see if I can get it perfectly. Uh, bolts from Ace Hardware. Uh, I kind of regret not getting it uh, longer than this one. And I'll show you the compare of what I took out. So... These Allen bolts is what came comes with the kit with these little tiny thin washer. What I ended up doing is ended up getting these 10 millimeter uh, bolts. They're about like $2 a piece, stainless steel. Uh, I believe this is 8.8 .8 grade. I was trying to get to 10.10. .10. Uh, there were 10.10 .10 that I also got like two of them with 10.9. But unfortunately, the Ace Harbor, two Ace Harbors that I went to ended up not having uh, these in stock so I just ended up with whatever I ended up finding so I wish I had gotten longer I think there was enough room for me to in the head to go ahead and get this clamped in but I made I still made it work and then I also just got some locking uh, washers as well 
uh, which I ended up putting on, you know, a lot of these. So wanted to share that. And then the other thing I wanted to share, uh, just a full disclaimer is, I'm, again, this is this is all got welded and everything. I went to ahead and uh, pressure tested and everything. There is still a leak. Now, again, I'm not blaming them shop at all or anything like that. I did find out that this is a material that's very complicated to weld, uh, even though it is aluminum. And you have to understand this is China made. So we don't, you, you got to think about like material wise and stuff like that. It is very difficult to weld. I mean, I'm practicing learning how to weld and, you know, based off the crappy metal that you get, it does that, it does get very complicated to uh, weld. But again, the shop did what they had to do and everything to get this welded and it's leaking very, very, very thin out of the, out of the, one of the wells, I believe it's like right around here. And I, how I found out was I got uh, soapy water in that little bottle over there, sprayed it, put some air in it, and then ended up seeing a little bit of bubble, very, very little bit of bubble start uh, popping out. Then, not just that, I found another one, which I recall when I did the whole install originally back up, uh, I believe a year or two years ago, that the air was coming out of here and there was some hissing and stuff. So I said, okay, whatever. It's 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 just a very little. Come to find out, I sprayed the shit out of all this, these two little holes. And uh, yeah, a lot of air coming out of it. So what I found out, if you look, I don't know if I can show you guys this in video. But if you look at, if you have these manifolds, these China made uh, manifolds, what they did was they didn't really weld this all around. What they did was they welded up to this spot and then they just put this bracket and then welded it around thinking that it was going to be fine. But they left out the welding part inside in this particular area where these holes are leaking, blowing air out of the intake. So if I blow air in here in my little boost uh, check thingy, I got air, like if I spray soap water right here, it's leaking air. Let me see if I can, I have some compressor air. So show you guys really, like this is very, uh, some messed up stuff. So I didn't realize this. Sorry guys, I'm shaking this camera and everything. I'm trying to get this on here. Let me get some water. So I'm trying to make this as informative for you guys, whoever's running these manifolds. Okay, I do gotta clean this whole thing up because I'm gonna be doing my little temporary fix on this. So I wanna make sure this, I don't mess this up, but anyways, let me see. Let's see, hold on, let me see if I can get this on camera for you guys. Or... Check this out, ready? I need two hands. Let me see, come on. You see that? Hold on, make it better. Yeah, see that? Oh yeah, it's leaking air out of that. Look at that. So, still leaking air. And my little, yep. So, water go. Take some time. Figured I'd talk to you guys about this because I know a lot of people run this intake manifold and people are like, oh yeah, you know, one person made a, a good amount of horsepower over 500. You know, people have made a thousand horsepower. I'm sure they have, but eventually they do crack. And these are almost every eBay intake manifolds that you would run on the 2JZ. So what a lot of people do, they do before installing it on the motor, they do get it rewelded and everything. And everything is good. But what I come to find out is this 
Look at that, it's still leaking air. So, what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna take this intake manifold out. Right now, what I'm gonna do is this, right now, I'm gonna, as much as I, you guys are gonna, not gonna like this, but I'm gonna go ahead and put some JB Weld all around here and just rock it. Cause this is a very, very tiny hole and, and I can't even find, I can't even see it with the eyes. I have to spray uh, soap water and boost pressure it to see exactly where, it, uh, you know, pinpoint exactly where it is. So along this line, I'm gonna go ahead and JB Weld this. And this is a temporary fix. This is not a permanent fix. I would just wanna, last this season and then for this what am i planning on doing so i'm going to go ahead blow some air in there and uh, get that soap water as uh, much as I, I can get it out and i'm going to go ahead and put toyota sealant in it and then i'm going to go ahead and put the bracket on there and i'm going to go ahead and put the bolts on the uh, and get it secured i'm going to go put a good amount of um toyota sealant in there just like what we you would use on the um, oil pans and stuff like that and just uh rock it and that I'm gonna let it sit overnight, it should, uh, you know, 12 plus hours. It should dry pretty good. It should hold uh, a good amount uh, pressure, I believe. So if it can last this summer, I mean, right now it's end of April. So if it can last up until September, October, I'd be very happy. And um, what I'll do is in winter time, along with the Mark IV while I work on that. I'm gonna to try to go ahead and save some money on the side, whatever chum change I can start saving up. I'm gonna go ahead and buy a real uh, intake. I'll probably buy, will buy a SP intake, which is very similar to what I have already, so I don't have to change a lot. So that's my goal, to actually buy a real intake and be done with this hassle that I am dealing with it right now. Um, I do can take this out and get it rewelded but I'm choosing not to, and the reason why is because I'm learning how to weld, and from my understanding, when you're applying that much heat, again, you're applying heat that's already welded, and got all welded and everything, I don't want metal to expand to a point where it, it it's not fixable. So if, if with applying a lot of heat in that area again, I don't want to come to a point where it, it just starts to open up more uh, and making it worse. So right now, since because it's a very very tiny hole, I'd rather just JB weld it and just not deal with it for a while. And I I, I and I, I know for a fact it will work. And this is a temporary fix, not for a long term fix. But if it ends up being a long term fix, even better. But temporary fix. And the reason why I don't want to weld it is because it might open up more. So uh, again, I was already told it was very complicated to weld this because of the material, and hence the reason why I don't want to take it back. I'm sh I, I do have faith that they can do it and get it fixed, but I again, it's already uh, heated, treated with the weld. I don't want to try to weld it again, so that's the reason why. And plus, it took me two hours to just to install this piece of crap, so I don't want to take it out again, spend another two hours, and then take it again, uh, put it back on here in another two hours. So it's just it, 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 it's pretty much all day. But that's pretty much it. I just want to talk to you guys about this, uh, make a quick video, and uh, give you guys uh, some knowledge on this. Sorry, guys, I have a cold or allergies kicking in all of a sudden. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, please leave comments. I have, I'd be happy to answer it. But quick intake conversation I wanted to talk to you guys about. So. I'm gonna go ahead and start putting everything back on. I just gotta put the intake back on and then my intake pipe for that, somehow the filter magically came out, the clamp, which I don't understand how. But I'm gonna go ahead and put everything back on, put all this back on, take this out. I'm gonna go ahead and JB weld that, dry that up pretty good, put some sealant in there, but put the bracket on, saw that bitch. Put some JB weld, let it sit overnight, and then I'm just gonna YOLO, drive it. If it breaks, it breaks. I don't give a shit anymore. But thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. So I figured I'd end the video here. I got the Jibby Weld pretty much put on. Yes, it looks bad. And why would I do it? But you know what? It's an eBay intake, it cracked. You know, and uh, I didn't feel like taking this out. It was a pain in the ass to install originally in the first place and then when i took it out it took forever to get it out and then when i installed it and found out there was more i had to do that so i mean i obviously got fixed and everything but uh, there was a tiny 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 hole which is basically a needle size hole maybe even smaller 
I had to use JB Weld to uh, fix that. And it did, it does work. Uh, I took it for a drive a couple of days ago, gave it uh, multiple 12, 24 pounds of boost and it held up perfectly fine, no issues. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that as a uh, temporary fix for the rest of the year. And if I do end up saving enough money where I have enough to buy a new intake, then I'll go ahead and buy a new intake. And I did end up finding out that HyperTune intake actually is the same size as this. So I might end up looking for a HyperTune intake manifold and then just go ahead and bolt it on. As for the two bolts for that bracket, it um so i did put toyota sealant in it the reason why i didn't put jb weld is because if i put jb weld and then go ahead and screw those down then it's forever gone uh it's not gonna allow, it's gonna be stuck so hence the reason why i put the toyota sealant in there and i it's holding up there's no issues now i didn't check the um with the boost pressure just because I feel like if it doesn't work, then I'm just gonna be really ticked off. So I'm just gonna pretend like that it's working right now. I mean, again, it did hold 24 pounds and drives a lot better than what it did before. So there is a notice and change in driving. So that's my fix. But on that note, guys, uh, eBay and take manifold. If you guys are planning on doing it, just make sure you guys keep it under 25 pounds of boost. Uh, I think mine cracked at 30 pounds. I, like I mentioned, 30 plus usually where it cracks. And I guess mine cracked at 30. And, and it was cold out that day too. So I don't know if that plays a factor. But yeah, if you're planning on running it under 25 pounds of boost, that's what I would recommend. But again, you can send it, get it welded and all that stuff. And then send it and see if it holds. Mine, mine holds so far. So thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.